Greetings and salutations. Thank you for lending an ear to the voice of the times. This Tuesday, October 12, 2021. For today's editorial, U.S. and Taliban recalibrate relations. Representatives from the United States and the Taliban met in Doha, Qatar over the weekend to explore ways of resetting relations with the new government in Afghanistan. It was the first high-level meeting between the two adversaries since the 20-year U.S. engagement in Afghanistan came to an abrupt end in August. There were no communiques issued after the two-day talks. According to the Al Jazeera news agency, the U.S. delegation wasn't offering any details, but the Taliban side sees the discussions as positive. For now, we can only speculate on the give-and-take that took place in Doha. But ahead of the meeting, the U.S. made it clear that the issue of international recognition for the Taliban will not be one of the talking points. That hasn't stopped the fundamentalist group from scheduling a separate meeting with the European Union, which has adopted more flexibility in dealing with the new rulers of Afghanistan. Since the chaotic Kabul airlift, the Biden administration has been trying to open channels of communication with the Taliban, first and foremost to assure the continued safe departure of the remaining U.S. citizens, foreign nationals, and vulnerable Afghans in the country. The Taliban, meanwhile, is appealing for humanitarian assistance and massive funding to prop up the sagging economy. Bookended by these two major issues is a raft of other concerns, including the rights of women and the formation of an inclusive government with broad support. It is safe to assume that the Doha meeting has shelved those concerns to focus on the more pressing problems at hand. President Joe Biden came under fusillade of criticism over his decision to end the evacuation from Afghanistan by August 31. About 124,000 people were flown out, a feat in itself, allowing Biden to declare the airlift a success. But dozens more priority evacuees who didn't make it to Kabul airport had to sit it out while the U.S. planned an exit strategy for them. Since then, the U.S. has facilitated safe passage for 105 Americans and 95 Afghans. Washington wants an assurance from the Taliban that the evacuation window stays open. The group could easily give that guarantee in exchange for a massive aid package to stem a humanitarian crisis. International aid groups warn that millions of Afghans now rely solely on food donations. The World Food Program noted that in one week alone, more than 90% of the 40 million population went hungry. A Norwegian aid group that visited Kabul recently said the economy was spiraling out of control and the banking system could collapse any day. Al Jazeera reported that the Afghan delegation at Doha would be asking the U.S. to unfreeze $10 billion worth of Afghan assets to pull the country from the edge of bankruptcy. After the fall of Kabul, the International Monetary Fund, World Bank, and other multilateral financial agencies shut down operations in Afghanistan, leaving the Taliban to face a liquidity nightmare. We can only hope that after agreement on the priorities have been reached, follow-up talks would tackle the peripheral issues. Immediately after taking over Kabul, the Taliban made an effort to replace its image as a repressive regime, portraying itself as a more moderate version, respectful of the rights of its citizens, particularly women. The attempt at remaking its image has failed. Restrictions on women have not been lifted. Female government workers have been told not to report for work. Girls are banned from attending school. Protest rallies by women have been violently dispersed. UNESCO has decried the violation of the fundamental right to education for girls and women. The Taliban's experiment in inclusive governance is also fraying. The caretaker cabinet that is supposed to bring together different ethnic and tribal leaders is gripped by factionalism. The U.S. wants to make sure the government it is dealing with stays in power long enough to see through the agreements that have been reached. The fate of Afghanistan hinges on the outcome of the Doha meeting. Every delay in throwing a lifeline to its people sends them deeper into the quagmire of catastrophe. And that's the editorial for Tuesday, October 12, 2021. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to our digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and listen to The Voice of the Times.